Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This week's video looks a little bit different than my typical firearms related content. This week I'm talking about my first three months doing jujitsu and I just want to kind of share with you guys some of the concerns that I had going into it, what these first three months have really been like, how I overcame those concerns, why I even started doing jujitsu in the first place. And I want to talk to you guys about some of the things that I've really taken from it and benefited from it, as well as how I found a gym and an instructor that I can trust. So first I wanna share with you guys kind of how and why I started doing jujitsu in the first place. If you know me at all, you know that it's kind of out of character for me. It's something that I would typically experience a lot of anxiety and I did kind of going into it was something I was really nervous about. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm really, really glad that I got into it and have stuck to it these last couple of months. So how I got into it was essentially, so I started watching a lot of active self-protection videos. And if you guys aren't already subscribed to that channel and notification bell and everything, make sure you go do that. Um, just so that you can kind of get a better idea of what kind of self-defense encounters are happening out there and how to appropriately respond to them. So basically I had been watching a lot of those videos and really often it seemed like situations were coming up where um, self-defenders were very much required to have empty-handed skills. And I have zero <laughs> empty-handed skills. Um, maybe a few more now that I've been doing jujitsu for a couple of months, but going into it, I did not have a single one. And so I noticed that that was a major part of my whole self-defense world that was lacking. And I wanted to start trying to fill that role. Um, fast forward, I went to a class in December of 2020, and a lot of the students and the instructors in that class were also taking jujitsu classes. And I was starting to realize how mainstream that is becoming, and um, basically just how much more often you're seeing people seeking out empty handed skills. Um, so that was kind of planted in my head. And within about a month and a half, one of my friends, I was telling her how I really wanted to get into it, but I hadn't yet. And her children went to jujitsu classes. So I actually went to one of their classes and watched how it went. And obviously an adult class is gonna look a lot different from you know a 10 to 12 year old class, but it was a really helpful introduction and it was enough of a push for me to actually meet the instructor and show up to a few of his classes and kind of get an actual feel for what the class is like in general. And after about taking three or four classes, I was so hooked and was having so much fun and signed up with a membership with them and have never looked back. So like I had mentioned, going into jujitsu and even thinking about getting started with jujitsu, I had some concerns and some hesitations, even some fears going into it. And I think that's super natural. I actually did a poll on my Instagram, kind of asking specifically ladies if they had any fears going into or thinking about doing jujitsu. And I think it was like a whopping 70% of the people that participated um, were afraid of doing jujitsu. And for me, I had fears of getting injured as well as just the idea of being so incredibly up close and so incredibly personal with strangers. And something that has happened over time as I've been in this gym is none of the people in the gym are strangers anymore. Um, even if they were getting into it, I thought that was gonna be a major concern. I thought it was gonna be super awkward to be so up close and in somebody's business. And to be honest with you, it was a complete non-issue. Like everyone is there to train, everyone is there to learn something and being close and in someone's business is just par for the course. So um, it just kind of gets thrown out the window really quickly. It's not something that wound up bothering me at all. And I thought it was gonna be a major issue. As far as the injury concern goes, Honestly, that's still kind of a concern. Um, that's still something that I worry about, but I think that's a good thing. I think that anyone that's doing ju doing jujitsu, not they shouldn't necessarily be scared, but it's something that we should be very conscious of that um, injury is totally a possibility. And that's why we tap. That's why we tap when you know we're starting to feel a submission or even maybe before we feel a submission. Um, for certain submissions, I'll tap once I know they have it, um, like ankle locks and wrist locks, um, shoulder stuff, anything that concerns me, I'll tap as soon as I know they're in position and before I feel any kind of pain. I don't really wanna get injured while I'm learning how to defend myself. Doesn't really, that doesn't really make sense to me. And 
it's always still a possibility, 100%. I've definitely been punched in the nose and um, I have tons of bruises, uh, but it's so worth it. And honestly, it's still so much fun. Injuries again are a concern, but I think that it's kind of the healthy concern to have. Something else that I learned really, really quickly was that it's okay to pick who you're willing to roll with. In fact, my instructor encouraged that, that I don't roll with people that I'm uncomfortable rolling with, especially at the beginning. And even as I've continued to go along in that, it's like a three month journey at this point, um, I've gotten a lot better at picking who I'm willing to roll with. Um, there's certain people that are just a little bit too intense for me. They're really, they can be really competitive. And I feel that I am much more likely to get injured with those people that are um, really intense and competitive. I'm there to learn how to defend myself and not necessarily how to win a match. And it's being competitive is not a bad thing and doing competition is an awesome thing. That might be something I get into in the future. Currently, that's still a good ways out of my comfort zone. But the point of this kind of section is that it's okay to not want to roll with certain people. And if you're at a good gym, nobody's going to judge you for that. Next, I just want to talk about some of the ways that I've benefited from doing jujitsu consistently. I've been going anywhere from two to four times a week now for about three months. And let me just say the very first thing I noticed that is that it's an amazing workout. I used to do CrossFit probably four times a week. It's been probably two, three years now since I've been that consistent with exercise. And so this has kind of been my reintroduction into being athletic again. And man, it is hard work. And because I'm small, I wind up on the bottom of rolls a lot. I'm getting squished a lot. I'm having to learn how to control my breathing and all kinds of things. So that's one way I've majorly benefited from is just my cardiovascular system and just getting a really good workout in general. The other thing is that it's a stress reliever for me. And I've heard other people say this too. Once you get on the mat and you're rolling with people, there's nothing else you could possibly think be thinking about. Um, it's such a mind game as well as a physical game. You're having to think about what you're going to do next, whether you're defending a submission or trying to do a submission. You're always thinking through how to perform that. And I, I mean, I haven't been able to think about anything else when I'm on the mat. And I find that is a benefit to my mental health. It's almost like a break from life and I get to just think about something entirely different and focus on it. And because of that, because of the fact that it is an amazing workout and it's a brain workout, I sleep like a baby at night. And I don't know if that's even something for other people to consider. Maybe everyone else in the whole world sleeps really well, but for me personally, I think and think and think and think and don't sleep very well. And so on the days that I do jujitsu, oh, I, I sleep like a log. Rolling right into the next portion of this video, I want to talk about how to find a good gym. This is something I was completely lost on when I was getting started. And luckily I was able to find a good recommendation from a friend who had already been experiencing this jujitsu gym, but it still was something that I wanted to kind of vet the gym that I was already looking at. And some people directed me towards an awesome article. It's really important to vet the gym that you're going to and kind of get a good idea for what a good gym looks like because if we don't find a good gym, we may wind up with an instructor that's maybe not giving us the best information or maybe even teaching us bad habits, but we could also wind up in a gym where we might be more likely to get injured. So it's important to take the time to vet whatever gym we wind up at. So like I said, I had had some people recommend an article from Immedia Action Combatives and that was majorly helpful to me. It helped me just kind of go through almost exhaustively on all of the different points that and things that I want to look for in a gym, um, especially for somebody who absolutely has no frame of reference. I had absolutely no idea what a good gym looks like. And that article was really exhaustive and it pointed out things that I really wouldn't have thought of, like make sure that you're going to a gym that cleans their mats consistently. Like, duh, and wow, that's so important, but I wouldn't have thought of that. And I maybe wouldn't have thought to pay attention to that when I was going into my first classes. So with that being said, I want to kind of sum up that article, but I'm going to link it below. And if you are wanting to vet whatever jujitsu gym you're looking at, please, 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 please 
take the time to go down into the link in the description and click on that article and read the whole thing yourself so that you can get a really good idea for what you wanna find and look for in a good gym. So some of the first main points from that article is that we wanna find a gym where the instructor is at least a black belt. There are so many high level practitioners these days and there's really no point for us to accept anything less than a black belt in our school's instructor. So that's point number one. You wanna find a gym where your instructor is at least a black belt. The next part would be kind of getting an idea for where they got their belt from. And as a complete beginner, I didn't really know what that meant. Like, okay, great, you got your belt from here. And I kind of had to seek out some Google searches and advice from friends on where that belt came from and what that really means. But the article kind of tends to that a little bit and helps you understand that a little bit. Um, the other part that's important is that we find out whether or not they are competing at all. And that's not to say that they need to be going and competing every weekend and winning every single match in order for them to be a good instructor. That's not the point at all. At least that's not the point that the article is making. The point is that you want to know that your instructor is willing to test their skills. If they're not competing um, and they're not ever testing their skills, that could be a really strong indicator of an ego problem and you don't really want an instructor with an ego problem. The way that I kind of handled this portion of the article in my like real life application is I honestly just went into my instructor's office. You know, I'd taken one of his classes and I went in after that first class and was like, hey, I need to ask you some questions. And to be honest, it's like, it was kind of uncomfortable, but I really just kind of wanted to get all those questions out of the way. Like, obviously he was a black belt, but I was like, do you compete? Where's your belt from? You know, what do you do to continue to test your skills? And all of those questions and something that was, um, the opposite of a red flag, a green light for me with that instructor was how well he fielded those questions. Like this girl that knows nothing about jujitsu walks into his office and he's been doing jujitsu for like 40 years. And she's like, are you really a credible instructor kind of thing? I ask those questions very respectfully, don't get me wrong. Um, but he fielded those questions really well. And he even told me that he respected the fact that I asked those questions and I respected that. I respected that he was so willing to answer those questions. And if you put yourself in a situation like that where you're asking your instructor basically whether or not they are um, a credible one, if they don't feel those questions well, if they're offended by you asking those questions and they don't answer them well, that could be a really big red flag and a reason to maybe seek out another gym. So long as you're fielding those questions respectfully, um, they should be able to answer them well and respectfully as well. Once you've kind of vetted the instructor and where his belt came from and just who he is as an instructor, you can go ahead and sign up for one of their classes and just kind of get a feel for it. Don't sign up for your membership just yet, but go in and check out a class and kind of get an evaluation of what the whole vibe of the class is like. Is the instructor absolutely welcoming questions? Um, are they explaining the moves in a way that you understand? Are they showing you a good example of what that looks like? Are questions welcome? All of those things are important. And also just use your intuition on this one. Just what does the vibe of the class feel like? That's, that's an important thing. You need to feel comfortable there and you need to feel comfortable with the students and your instructor. The next part would be, again, to pay attention to the overall cleanliness of the gym. Um, again, this was not at all something that I would have thought of on my own. The article really did a good job of pointing that out for me, and I was able to pay attention to that in my first couple of classes. Were the mats getting cleaned regularly, and um, was that a priority for the gym? And that's actually something that my instructor mentioned was a really high priority for them, was to make sure the mats were clean. Um, that's a really important thing to pay attention to. So. I I appreciated the article mentioning that. One last thing that I wanna say here again is I only mentioned little pieces from that article. If you're looking to find a way to differentiate a good gym from a bad gym, definitely click the link below and check out that article and read the whole thing for yourself. Lastly, I just wanted to talk about some of my overall training goals. I've been doing jujitsu now for three months and I think when I first started into it, I was just trying to absorb absolutely everything that was getting thrown at me in these classes um, because I knew absolutely nothing. And so whenever I would roll with people, they would just destroy me, which I still pretty much get destroyed constantly. But 
um, I've been able to gain some skills so that I can at least hold my own for a little while. And um, right now I'm working on a few specific skills. Um, my teacher's given me some specific ones to drill more consistently and more regularly so that I can kind of get those and not necessarily master them, but understand them and be able to work them without having to give it a lot of thought. Um, a lot of the things that I will do in roles, I have to really, really think them through um, and they're not quite muscle memory yet. So I'm working on making some specific things um, more muscle memory oriented. Um, so as far as jujitsu, that's kind of what I'm working on right now. Um, and then for future training goals, I really, really, and I hesitate to even say this publicly because now there's public accountability. So, but I really want to take a, a class with Cecil Birch of Immediate Action Combatives. That's um, the guy who wrote the article I've been kind of talking about and how to find a good gym. And then eventually I want to take ECQC with Craig Douglas. And that may not be a 2021 thing. It looks like a lot of, if not all of their classes are full right now, at least the ones I can make it to. Um, so hopefully in 2022. And that's pretty much all for today's video. Something I wanted to mention to you guys really quick is recently I came across Kimberly Kinch's YouTube channel and I hit subscribe and the notification bell. She's putting some amazing content out there for beginner jujitsu students. And I would highly encourage you guys to go check out her channel if you guys want more information on this. This is definitely not a topic I'm going to be covering with any amount of consistency. I just kind of wanted to share how I got started with it and maybe how you guys can get started with it. So go check out my link in the description um, leading you guys to her channel and check out some of her videos. And if you guys feel like supporting Armed and Styled, head on over to my website and grab a sticker or two. I do have hats coming soon. So definitely keep your eye out for those and I'll see you guys next week.